we're about to launch into a section that is entirely word problems. And so before we do that, we want to spend a moment to talk about some strategies to do these problems correctly. The first one, read the words. Now this seems super obvious, but there are a lot of students that don't actually read the words in a word problem. They just start looking for numbers and start sketching some pictures and labeling things without making sure they really understand what's happening. And so it's really important that you take the time to understand what's going on, and that starts from reading the words. The next one, carefully draw a picture. This is also a representation of your understanding of the problem. There are times when students will draw a picture. So in this, in this course, like a course in trigonometry, they'll draw a triangle and they'll start labeling, you know, this is 18 degrees, this is 15 degrees. But they'll be labeling sides without actually reading the words and understanding what's happening. And so the labels are then wrong, which leads to wrong answers. And so make sure when you draw the picture that you're thinking through the words to make sure that the picture represents what's happening. And the last one is to answer the question. Again, this seems obvious, but sometimes when you get to the end of a calculation, you just you, f you feel that sense of I'm done and you don't actually go back and make sure you ask you answered the question being asked. Some problems, some problems don't have you, you know, you calculate this, the length of one side, but they're asking you for a different piece of information and that's only a part of it. So make sure when you go back through the word problems, make sure you go read the question and then make sure that your your work actually answers that question. So these are three quick tips as you work through these word problems to make sure that you do things correctly. So here's an example. An airplane needs to fly to an airfield located 300 miles east and 200 miles north of its position. What direction should it fly? So we'll start off with something basic. The directions of a compass. Uh, hopefully you're familiar with this. So north is up typically, south is down, west is over here, and east is over there. And so this is just giving us an orientation. Now we need to make sure we read the words. 300 miles east and 200 miles north of its current position. So let's say this is the current position. 300 miles east is 300 this way. And then 200 miles north. And here is where that airfield is located. And we need to figure out what direction it's flying. And so you can see when we draw this, we ended up with a right triangle. And so presumably when you set this up and you're trying to find the direction, we need to get that direction, which is going to be this angle, or at least it's going to be related to this angle. More on that in a moment. So now we just set up our, our formula. What relationship in a right triangle relates the opposite side and the adjacent side of an angle? And here's where you just have to know your formulas. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 2 thirds. We can put this into a calculator. Theta is the inverse tangent of 2 thirds. And in this case, we're going to work in degrees because this is a practical problem and degrees make more sense for navigation. And so when we plug this into a calculator, you're going to get theta is 33.7 degrees, approximately. So we drew a picture. Did we answer the question? Well, sort of. 33.7 degrees in this diagram sort of points in a particular direction, but it doesn't explain to someone what direction is actually heading. So for example, if you told someone, go 33 degrees, that doesn't mean anything to them. So you need to, you need to say a little bit more here. And the way we talk about directions, there are lots of different ways. Um, you can't just say 33.7 degrees northeast because there are actually two different ways you can measure. You can measure from east up towards north or from north down towards east. And so um, I'm not going to get into a lot of details about how you should do this because I don't think there is a should. Um, one way is to think of this in standard position and say 33.7 degrees from standard in standard position. Like this is the direction. It's not the best because in, the, in practice saying in standard position, that's a very mathy thing and we're talking about navigation in real life. And so this isn't the best answer, although it will work for the purposes of this problem because it explains what you mean, especially if you have this compass drawn up here. A better way to do it is to think about it in terms of these compass directions. So here's north and here's east, and we're going to go in between north and east. So one way we might say this is 33.7 degrees north of east. Now what does that mean, north of east, north of east? So you start facing east and you turn towards the north, that is how you turn, that, that's the direction north of east. You can also do east of north, so you're starting from here and go down this way, but since we drew the picture this way, that's our angle down there. So it makes more sense to say north of east uh, because of how I set it up. 
But that doesn't mean that something like um, uh, 56.3 degrees east of north is wrong. And that's one of the things about these word problems is that sometimes there are multiple ways of saying the answer. And you may get an answer different from someone else that looks different on the surface, but actually represents the same thing. So make sure you, you, you don't just focus on the answer, but you think about the process and ask, does the process make sense? So here's another example. To avoid falling backwards from climbing a ladder, the ladder should make an angle with the ground of no larger than 75 degrees. What is the minimum length of ladder required to safely reach the top of a 10-foot wall? So let's think about this for a moment. To avoid falling backwards when climbing a ladder. If you don't have a lot of experience climbing ladders, you may have to think about this for a moment. What does it mean to fall backwards? Well, basically, if you imagine you have a ladder here and you have someone trying to climb the ladder, if their weight is too far backwards, then they will fall, the ladder will fall down this way. Uh, it has to do with the center of mass and things like that. If you're not familiar with it, hopefully you can at least visualize what's happening. And so the way you prevent that is you make this angle, well, more shallow, so that way you won't be falling backwards anymore. So that's the first part. Do you understand the words? Do you understand the setup of the problem? Now, what is it saying? Let me erase this real quick. So what is it saying? We are trying to make, let's see, the, the angle can be no larger than 75 degrees. What is the minimum length of ladder required to safely climb to, to the top, or safely reach the top of a 10-foot wall? So here's our 10-foot wall. We're trying to reach the top of this, and we want to find the minimum length of ladder to safely reach the top of the wall. So we could get a 10-foot ladder and just slam it right up against the wall, but it'll probably fall when we try to climb it. So we want a 75 degree angle because this angle will make it the shortest possible ladder. And we're trying to figure out this length right here, which we'll call C because it looks like the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Once we have the picture set up, what do we need to do? We need to figure out which trigonometric function will lead to um, this relationship. So what do we have here? We've got a 75 degree angle. We've got the opposite side. We've got the hypotenuse. So opposite hypotenuse, that's sine. So sine of 75 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. We can now solve for C. C is equal to 10 over sine of 75 degrees. And when you plug this into a calculator, you get that C is approximately 10.4 feet. Now there's something interesting that happens with this value here. Some students will see this and they will interpret it as 10 feet and 4 inches. This is a very, unfortunately, common mistake translating between decimals and different units of measurement. 10.4 feet is not 10 feet and 4 inches. This 0.4 is 0.4 of a foot, or 0.4 times 12 inches. And so just be very careful when you read and interpret this. This also happens with times. Um, students will get an answer like 3.6 or 3.6 hours, and they'll say 3 hours and 6 minutes, or 3.12 and say 3 hours and 12 minutes. Um, that's just coming from not paying attention to what the words mean and what they represent. And so just please be careful with that.